Hey, how's it going? This is Hellbent, and welcome to Auto Hotkey GUI uh, mini tutorial number 22. Uh, I don't know why I started recording now, but uh, I should have had this set up. Auto Hotkey. I'm just trying to get used to uh, having some kind of text on the screen for all the tutorials. Uh, do 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 mini. Number 22. So this is this is my latest toy that I've been playing with, and I'm going to be releasing shortly a version for anyone who wants it. Um, just like most of my scripts, it'll likely be free. So uh, yeah, let's go with that. So this is built into my own custom toolbar. As you can see, it's a work in progress. All I have is these buttons, and the update button drops down the E. So, all right. So there we go. Okay, there that I have that. I need to do one last thing. Um, I need to set it up so I can actually run our script. Okay, so this this um, that didn't work. This mini tutorial, we're going to be looking at uh, removing the caption off of uh, our GUI, our Auto Hotkey GUI. So I've already gone ahead and wrote in the code for our <clears throat> basic GUI. So we have just single instance force, normal, uh, always on top. I picked a color for our GUI, and it's displayed size, a width of 500 and a height of 500, and I gave it a name, mini tut number 22. And then I have our GUI close and a hotkey to exit the program for whatever reason we might need. So now that I have that loaded in, let me go ahead and run it. So here's our GUI. And what we're going to be talking about today is removing all of this part that's a, a reddish brownish color around it. So our caption, our title, all the buttons off of it, everything like that. So we're going to get rid of all of that. And then I'm going to show you what we need to do in order to actually still interact and move our GUI. So that's going to be the main focus of this tutorial is removing this and then how we actually go about moving this once we have it off. Now this is going to come into play, at least part of it, uh, for two upcoming tutorials. One of them, or series at least, uh, one of them is going to be a continuation of the multiple GUI tutorials. Um, so <clears throat> once we get into layering multiple GUIs on top of each other, we're going to want to make it so that way we can get rid of these title bars, the, the caption, and then go through all of that, blah, blah, blah. And the other one is when we start getting into uh, completely custom GUIs, where we completely get rid of that, build in our own buttons, we'll have our own button to close, our own button to maximize, minimize, everything like that. Everything's going to be custom. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get rid of this caption first. So what we can do is we can create on a separate line uh, the GUI and then the command that we're going to be doing but we can also do it on the same line that we have options like always on top so what we're, I'm going to do is beside this always on top is I'm just going to type in minus caption and now if I save this and run it again everything all the border all the, the name every all these other buttons and everything is going to be removed so here we go we have it again but the problem is we can't move our GUI so I click on it there's nothing for it to click so built into that title bar or that caption bar is the code for to know that if I click down on that and then move my cursor while I'm clicking it knows to move my GUI so what we need to do is we need to program that in so let me close that um, Actually, you know what, before we do that, let's look at just adding in our own button. So I'm going to create a button, and I'm not going to care where I position it because that's something that you're going to do for yourself, like you're going to decide where I want it, how how big do I want it, etc, etc. So I'm just going to put it X100, Y100, I'm going to give it a width of 100, and I'm going to give it a height 100. Alright, and then I am going to 
put some text on it that says exit and then what I'm going to do is because we don't have that X in the top corner to close our program what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put a label in our button and attach it to this GUI close label so I'm going to go to or G label and GUI close so now when we press on our button it's going to execute our label here which is going to exit our app so I'm going to go ahead and save that run it and now we have this ugly button on our screen and if I hit that it exits out of our program okay so we have a way of exiting it out now we need a way uh, need a way of actually moving it around so this is a topic that I'm not very well versed in and I can't go into too many of the specifics of it I have seen a couple of other YouTube videos that that lightly tiptoe into this um, they're not very comprehensive but they do give a lot more information than I'm going to be giving in this all I'm going to be doing is specifically working with the specific message that we need to actually move our GUI around so this is when we interact with our GUI every when we click down our left mouse button anywhere in this surface what we're going to do is what happens is a message is sent so this is how Windows communicates with other programs it keeps track of these messages that are being sent around posted received etc etc and like I said I'm not going to go into that um, I wish that I could go into it but I'm not very well versed I only use it when I have to so far and in the future I'll dive more deeply into it but for right now I can't give a full tutorial on it so anyways what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for one of those messages that's received so when we're gonna look for the message when a, the user clicks the left mouse button down inside of our GUI so we're gonna look for the on message we're gonna say on, on when we receive this message and then we're gonna specify what message we're looking for and here we're gonna put the hex code for that message so it's 0x201 and if you go to the auto hotkey uh, message list of messages you can find them all but they're not very clear some of them you know the names of them they're, they're kind of clear on what happens but they're not really written to be all that clear so what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna look for the met that message 201 so I can probably find that uh, 201 so here Windows message uh, left button down so we're gonna look for that message and then when we, re when we receive that message we're gonna post another message which is this one here and if I go to the documentation for Windows once again it's not very clear um, but in this this L parameter I can kind of see you can kind of uh, interpret what it's doing so when we click down it's going to take our current X and Y location in relation to the top uh, left corner of that window and if we move our cursor 100 pixels over it'll move the top left corner 100 pixels over if I move 100 pixels up it'll move the top left corner 100 pixels up and then when once we release it it'll redraw our GUI so we're gonna look for that message and then we're gonna create a function and we can do anything we want once we receive this message and I'll demonstrate that once we get there so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a a uh, function called L button down and once again like I said I have I'm not very well versed so I don't know if I would actually have to use this name or if I can create my own name for a function I I'm under the impression that I can probably write my create my own name for this because all this is is just triggering a function but I do not know so what I do is I do it the way that I had seen it and you know what after this video I'll actually come back and I'll test to see if I can actually create my own function so down here at the bottom of my script wherever I put my functions normally I'm gonna create that function so it's WM L button down so that's what the functions name is and I don't need to pass any parameters to it so I can just open and close my parentheses there and then 
in here I can have it do anything I want it to so I can have it set so that way if I click on that window I can have it do anything that I want I can make it run a program I can make it pop up a message box I can make it close a program I can make it switch windows I can make it log into Facebook I can do anything I want and to demonstrate that we'll just create a little message box here that says here now because I have this GUI showing up in the middle of the screen and I have it set to always on top what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my message also always on top so if I use my little message box tool here I can get the code or the the string of numbers that it will give me a message box that's always on top and I'm just gonna put here I'm gonna copy that code and I'm gonna replace my normal message box with that so here we go so when we press anywhere down in our in our GUI it'll trigger this function which will pop up our message box so if I click anywhere in this surface we get our message box if I click down here I get in my message box and like I said we can have it do anything we want once it gets that message of us clicking down inside of our our uh, GUI so well, apparently I don't want to have that alright <clears throat> so instead of having that message box what we're gonna do is we're going to post that other message that I showed you on the documentation page so we're gonna get it to post this message which looks at my current X and Y location of my cursor and then it's going to move the window in relationship to that so like I said if I if I click down here and I move 100 pixels over it'll take the top left corner of our GUI and move it 100 pixels over so we're gonna do that so we're gonna post a message and the message is 0 X a one now this part I couldn't see in the documentation but from experience of how I learned this um, I did see that there was a parameter here in the second one here this number two that is important but I don't know why I don't specifically know why and I didn't really care to be honest right now I don't really care I just care that it works that's all I wanted to do I just want this to do what I want to do which is move the GUI so for now I would rather invest my time in building the GUI rather than learning what this number two is so if I go ahead and save now if I click down in the surface now I can actually move my GUI around by posting this message so that's what that does um, one thing that I have personally encountered and there's probably a straight-up solution for it but sometimes you know you can spend five hours trying to find something that you could have just made a, a duct tape solution for in five seconds so this what I'm going to talk about next is one of those cases where I had I had recently built a GUI that had multiple layers and all of them were missing their caption now with this here if as soon as I start to move one of these windows all the other ones would become detached and I looked for probably about an hour to find a solution for it but with my understanding of how I can do anything I want inside of here I came up with my own solution so what I did in here is if you if you come across the same problem where you have multiple layers of your GUI what you can do is or what I did was I just created a a timed event so I I did my set timer that would trigger a label and I would turn it on when this as soon as I press down my button inside of that timed event all I did was I just kept track of where my cursor was and since I knew what the what the other windows their position in uh, relationship to the window that I was actually moving all I had to do was just show them as I moved so I'd move a little bit and then it would show them wherever so I, I got around the problem where my windows would become detached just by putting in a timed event to monitor where my cursor was when I was actually moving this window there's other ways like I said there's multiple I don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning but there's mul there's usually more than one way to skin a cat and 
So this is probably your preferred method to do this kind of thing, but there's there's literally so many ways that you can do this. Um, for example, this one here, I don't have in this my ability to actually move it. So if I click down and try to move, it doesn't do anything. Instead, what I have is if I press a hot key, it will take this top left corner and it will stick it right where my cursor is. So if I hit caps lock, it'll follow me around so wherever my cursor goes this goes and then in order for me to place it all I have to do is just click the left mouse button and then that closes that and it'll stay there so like I said there's there's tons of different ways that you can accomplish the same task um, like I said before I'm also going to be doing oh, um, where is it yeah so I'm, I'm gonna be releasing this one here soon for anyone who's interested um, just like most of my other scripts, I'll probably be doing this one for free. And it's for those that are interested in actually creating that banner up there. But anyways, I think that covers this one. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I hope I, I was clear on how we actually go about removing our caption and then setting it so that way we can just click and move around. And there's lots of different ways. We could have made it so that way if we click on this button, it's only if we click on this button can we move it around and et cetera, et cetera. All right, that's it for this one. Have a good evening.